Israel against Colombia, round number 5 of Chess Olympia the 2024. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Grandmaster from Israel and maybe I'm the biggest fan of the Israel national team. So today we will watch the crucial match between Israel and Colombia in the 2024 Chess Olympiad in Hungary, round number 5. The match was intense, so watch until the end to find out how it ended. Are we happy? Or disappointed let's get started so uh, let's move for the best board first board of our national team Grandmaster Maxim Rochten against Grandmaster Roberto Garcia uh, let's see what happens so e4 c5 knight f3 d6 bishop b5 check bishop d7 I like to play like this uh, also with the black pieces but also knight e7 is very interesting bishop b5 this is the most covariation against uh, the Sicilian so bishop d7 bishop takes knight takes castle and e6 was played a little bit weird I can tell you that knight g f f6 this is the most logical move here and also the the most common one after rook e1 we will play the move g6 c3 bishop g7 d4 and castle and now e5 is not uh, something that we need to afraid from um, but after queen e2 we would like to play the move e6 because now if we are playing the move g6 c3 bishop g7 d4 castle now e5 with e6 is very strong as this queen is protecting it right and the queen is more uh, active from the rook here on f1 so this position is is not so good for for black of course um, so after castle, Maxim Rochten is playing the move e6, interesting solution uh, by Max. Queen e2, knight g f6, and now c3, so it's going back to this line, bishop e7, d4, and castle, e5, the best move in the position, knight e8, and now queen e4. I think here, uh, you know, this is the most um, important theory here to know with the black pieces, the e5 move, and I have a feeling that Roberto Garcia uh, was not sure about his position and uh, maybe he was not familiar about knight e8 uh, because this is the best move until um, now as i know in my knowledge of course so queen e4 i think rook d1 if i remember correct this is the best move in the position c takes d4 c takes knight c7 knight b6 knight cd5 rook c8 something around this one and and white will play the move knight c3 with knight e4 bishop g5 h4 and you know to play with these two uh, knights here on f3 and e4 so he played the move queen e4 and now max took the pawn and played the move d takes e5 very logical and now knight c5 of course also attacking the queen and also protecting this pawn on b7 queen g4 and now queen d3 you know also this move very uh, makes sense for me at least also f5 was was a very strong one because you're attacking the queen and if e takes f6 knight takes f6 and black is playing very fast, you know, very active. For example, queen h3, knight f4, knight d3, uh, queen d5, bishop c5, and you know, black is doing perfect here. Also maybe rook f5, so bl the black pieces are more active than the white's one, right? So yeah, f5, it's not easy one to play, but uh, queen d3 also makes sense because now queen g6, and I don't know, knight c7, rook d8, it seems like black is better, uh, yeah. Knight c3, knight c7 was played. Of course, after bishop h6, we will play the move queen g6, and black is totally fine here in this position. I think uh, in this endgame, there is a very good options for black, uh, because this pawn on e5 is not so good. This bishop is really great. And also, there are some, uh, you know, like weak squares for white. So he played the move rook d1 instead of bishop h6, queen f5, Queen c4, rook fc8, bishop p3, and now knight s5, a6, of course, because we have two knights here, right? So, knight 5, a6, rook d7 was played. Uh, yeah, rook ac1 was a little bit better here. Uh, the point here that after knight d5, for example, just knight takes d5. And rook c4, just knight e7 and taking the queen. So after, uh, I don't know, e takes d5, just queen takes and one pawn up. So knight d5 is, is bad move. Um, and there is some energy with white pieces. You can see that these two rooks are doing great. And also uh, these knights and the bishop and the queen. 
So black a little bit not active here. The the pieces are a little bit passive. So rook d7 was played and this was a mistake because bishop f8 and now knight d5 this is the threat because now the bishop on e7 was not in the air. So queen h4 just going from the knight d5 uh, idea. h6 was played and also interesting move because you really want to open a window for this king, right? So a3 and now knight c5. Another interesting move was to play knight b8. Uh, like Rapport uh, in the last game that I uploaded in my YouTube channel because knight is coming to c6 also attacking the rook on d7 and also bringing the knight to a good uh, square of course knight c5 was played, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook d1, bishop f8, h3 you know some moves here and this position should be interesting you know for both sides but Maxim Rochin with one minute on the clock very very um, difficult to play uh, in this time travel here bishop e7, queen f4, knight a4, really great move knight c3, knight d5, yeah it's doing perfect Rook c2 was a little bit mistake because knight c3 was a better one, right? Knight d5 and rook a c8 looks perfect for, for black. Um, but yeah, he played move rook c2, queen e1, knight c3, rook d2. Uh, here there was a move rook g4 with knight h5, some attacking here. Uh, attacking ideas, only 32 moves and Maxim Rochen has al already half a minute and it's very complicated position to play. So rook 1, d2 was played, rook takes... Queen takes knight d5. Yeah, this position looks fine for black. King h7. Yeah, g6. Knight f4. Rook d8. Takes, takes. Queen c3. Queen d3. You know, uh, there is a move here. Bishop d8 uh, to bring the bishop to b6 and attacking the pawn on f2. Um, but what can I say? You know, th in the time trouble, it's very difficult to play. Queen d3 was played. And king g7. Takes, takes. And draw a greed in this position and I think Max did uh, his best job to cover this draw with the black pieces against a very strong grandmaster. So let's move to the second game and we have here the best game in this match. We have grandmaster Ido Gorsten with white pieces. Let's see him playing against grandmaster Jose uh, Gabriel Carduso. Let's see it. So c4, e5, g3, as we know, Ido Gorsten is playing the English opening, c6, knight f3, e4, knight e4, d5, takes, takes, knight c2, I, I know that Ido is really familiar with this position, knight f6, knight c3, queen e5, bishop g2, is playing very fast as you can see, rook b1, uh, looking interesting solution, now b4, bishop b2, you know, uh, just opening this diagonal also for the bishop, this diagonal for this bishop, and Ido is doing great here. After knight takes b4, of course, just uh, the point is knight takes, bishop takes, and id4. And this position is just way over because the queen is under attack also. And this rook uh, attacking this bishop. So, yeah. He played the move a3 after queen e6. Yeah. Uh, bishop b2, queen e6, of course. a3 just uh, to defend the pawn now on b4. c5, bishop a1. I like how Ido is playing, you know. Very calm. He has time. Don't. He's never hurry. Everything is fine. Everything is under control when, when you're playing against Ido Gorsten. Rook d8, castle, h5 was played, and h4, h3, this is the point of uh, black. I really like this idea with the black pieces, but b5, knight c7, knight e3, uh, every move counts here. You can see that Ido is thinking about every piece. Now, queen c2 and attacking the pawn on e4, so yeah, he's doing perfect, knight e3, a6 was played, b takes, rook takes, and queen c2. This pawn is very important for Ido Gorsten because this pawn now blocking this diagonal for this bishop. Rook takes a3, bishop b2, going back, and now knight takes c4, knight takes, bishop takes, g6, d3, another very calm move. Also, queen c3 was interesting solution um, because you are attacking checkmate, right? Also on g7, but now rook d4, bishop d3. Yeah, I, I really understand why uh, he didn't play this because it's not feeling well. Um, so d3 was better better move i think uh, in in chess terms right just improving the position also grabbing this bishop uh, on e4 defended everything everything is under control knight b5 knight c4 knight d4 bishop takes c6 takes d4 and now rook b5 really like i really like this move also bishop b5 bishop b7 sorry was an interesting solution just take the pawn um, but, you know, he, he really likes this bishop on e4. So he played with rook b5, he wants to bring the other rook to b1, also rook e5. I like this also a solution uh, by, by Dogorsten, he's playing very active, every move developing and improving his position. 
uh, just in incredible. Uh, B6 was played, F4, now he wants to attack with F5. Uh, this was his point, maybe Rook B5 also uh, protecting the F5 square and, uh, you know, uh, help to attack in the king's uh, side. So Queen F7, uh, F6, of course, was played. Rook G5, also F5 was interesting because after G5, something around, I don't know, I thought like maybe Queen D1, E3, something around this one, but maybe not. Maybe Queen D2 or B2. Also attacking this pawn, 95, 96. Interesting position, not so easy of course, but I really understand why he didn't play the move F5. Rook G5 was played. Uh, he wanted to bring this knight to E5 and attack on G6. So Bishop H3, Rook B1, Queen E6, and now Rook E5, Queen F6. Uh, Black has only 6 minutes on this position with 22 minutes of Dogorstein in only 30 moves. He's doing perfectly also in the time management. Fantastic until now. Knight E2, I really like this move also, providing the option to bring this knight to F3 to G5. Yeah, very nice maneuvering. And also Bishop D5, Knight E4, something like this. Rook c8 was played, queen d1, rook c5, and this was a terrible mistake by black, a blunder, because bishop b7, just winning absolutely, because you are attacking this rook, and also knight e4, this is the threat, the fork, right? So, yeah, after bishop b7, it seems like this position just should be losing, knight e4, just taking this rook after the queen is going back, and also the, the bishop on e7 is under attack, yeah, just winning absolutely position, rook c5, bishop b7 was... Winning, but Idogorosten playing uh, in 1 minute 93 was a mistake. Rook takes, knight takes, rook a2, bishop d5, attacking this pawn on f7, and also the rook on a2. And now bishop e6 was a, just a blunder. I don't know how, why, why play this one, but rook a5, of course, was much better. After bishop f7, king f8, and it's not so easy to play because now rook takes e5, this is the threat. And for example, I don't know, bishop g6, just rook takes c5 and taking the bishop. After bishop c4, for example, just takes, takes, and queen c6 with attack here with bishop g5. Sorry, bishop g5 and bishop e3. Yeah, very, very not simple to, to play for both sides, but this is really seems ba bad for white. And uh, so bishop e6 just taking the rook and this position just really lost. You can see that Ido Gorsten uh, winning this game because of the good management of the time and also very good moves rook d7 rook d8 yeah he's playing just amazing rook takes d7 brilliant move brilliant game by dog gorsten very important game and and result for the israeli team against colombia just incredible let's go to the tamir nabati game the legend from israel tamir nabati with the black pieces so he's going for the italian you know i will go it very fast it's it's interesting of course game uh, but we have so much things to do today so yeah he's going every piece developing improving b5 takes takes 97 95 takes takes really what can i tell you guys it's a little bit um you know not something that very important and interesting you know such games that white really wants to do a draw replacing and exchanging a lot of pieces in this position he had like chance to play d4 with d3 uh, but it seems that white really uh, wanted to, to do a draw against tamir nabati so d takes e4 was played rook d1 queen e8 rook d4 queen c8 queen uh, c5 also here was an idea and uh, with rook d7 because this king on g1 is a little bit weak Rook d8 was played now, knight, rook c7, rook c1, and rook d1. He's claiming that black is, is pushing for win, but not so easy because the king on h3 is looking very safe. Rook, queen d7, rook c2, and sometimes trouble here, knight e7. Uh, yeah, queen d5 was not the best. Queen takes b5 was an interesting solution because after queen takes d2, queen takes c4. And don't forget that after rook c7, there is a move queen f1. It's a checkmate very soon because, yeah, this king is just... Um, yeah, he's losing, obviously. So queen d5 was played, rook c7, queen g2, knight f5, and now queen f3, very strong move, uh, with only one minute on the board. Uh, yeah, amazing, queen f3, queen takes h2, queen e4, another very strong move, the only move here because, you know, so much uh, troubles here, rook g2 with queen h4 checkmate, uh, I don't know, it's, it's very, very tempting for, for black. Um, so many attacking solutions here, right? So yeah, queen e4 just uh, you know putting like this, and also rook g7. This is the point. 
And now king h8 was played and coming back and now rook d8, rook g7 check, king h8, rook g6, rook a8. And Tamir Navati, every move, you know, is claiming that he wants to win the game. And it's just beautiful to see because, you know, he's just someone that really wants to win and play until the end every single game. For example, queen b7, of course, losing uh, because of, I don't know, queen e2 check, seems just winning absolutely. Queen e3, just knight 3 and taking the queen. Uh, of course in, on f3 so here after I don't know rook e6 also losing because of rook g8 king takes queen h5 king f6 rook f8 and uh, checkmate right checkmate yeah it's checkmate so yeah queen f3 was played rook a3 a brilliant move here of course after queen takes queen e2 check or queen f3 and now knight e3 and we are taking the queen and if he's playing the move king h3 just queen takes h5 king g2 and taking this queen uh, this rook of course and winning so 9f6 was played, you know, another great move by uh, the Grandmaster from Colombia. If he's taking the queen, of course, rook g8 checkmate and white is winning. But Tamir Nabati, of course, uh, never will fall uh, on this tactic. Queen g3 takes, 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 king h5 is going for 97, going for this one. You know, he's claiming that maybe he has some options here, but this position should be a draw. And uh, white managed to, to do it very fast. Uh, with no issues so here king g5 and draw agreed good game i think by tamir nabati and he's coming back you know from a loss uh, he's doing it just amazing i think tamir nabati will have um, a very huge wins in the next uh, rounds of the tournaments let's go for the last uh, board we have grandmaster evgeny posny with white pieces and d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3. This is the queen's gambit decline. Bishop g5, e3, and rook c1. Uh, very logical until now. Castle a6, bishop d3, takes, takes, knight e5. It seems that black is really, um, you know, trying to do a draw as he can do. And here there are some, um, you know, exchange of, of pieces. Knight e6, queen e5. A little bit, um, you know, ugly situation uh, to play against because this international master really wants to do a draw with black pieces. Uh, so he managed to do it. It's it was not easy for him, but but somehow he managed to do it. And in this position, yeah, just a repetition, three time repetition. Uh, you know, Evgeny is very solid one. Uh, he going for a draw. Everything is fine. He look uh, up for his team and saw that. Ido is winning, let's do a draw. So ladies and gentlemen, the final result, two and a half for Israel against Colombia. Two and a half against one and a half, of course, and Israel managed to bring a very important win home. Today, tomorrow, today, today, we have a very beautiful game. Match between Israel against Uzbekistan. You know, Uzbekistan won the Olympiad last time. Wow, it will be perfect. Abdul Saturov, Sindarov, so much things to see. You will see it with me in the live stream three hours from now. Don't go anywhere. See you there. Bye. Bye.